You are about to hear a story based on actual events. To protect the innocent, names and places have been changed. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers bring you Mr. Herbert Marshall in a story taken from life. Tonight's presentation of... Suspense! Tonight, Autolite presents Betrayal in Vienna, the true story of a man who traitorously destroyed an empire, starring Mr. Herbert Marshall. Well, there's Stanley Smart, baseball's genial genius. How do you like the series, Stan? The World Series, Hollow? No, no, no. The intricate series of Autolite units that make up the electrical system of your Autolite-equipped car. The system that enables you to start your car, turn on your lights, radio, horn, and heater. That takes Major League teamwork, Hollow. And that's the teamwork built into Autolite coils, distributors, and all the other important units that make up the complete electrical systems used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars. And all those units and their thousands of component parts are related like a team by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill to give you the smoothest performance money can buy. Never break up that winning combination, Otto. Right you are, Stan. So, friends, if your Autolite-equipped car needs replacement parts, insist on Autolite original factory parts. You'll find it pays. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with Betrayal in Vienna and the performance of Mr. Herbert Marshall, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. September 15, 1913. Today started much like any other, but one thing I now understand... It will end differently. And more than the day will end, much more. This afternoon I called, as I often do, on the Countess von Lenau. I asked not to be announced and stood unnoticed in the doorway. Her charming salon was crowded with guests and overflowing with music, and the familiar brilliant scene was suddenly precious to me. Then I heard Lieutenant Haushofer's voice, low but sharp in my ear. Colonel. Yes. We've just received word Helsinger was shot this morning as a spy. Come. Now, what did you hear? 1426 o'clock. A wireless message from Petersburg to the Russian uh, embassy. May I fetch you something, sir? Water? Here, let me help you to a chair. No, I'll be all right. Sir, I know, everyone knows how much Captain Helsinger meant to you. The report said he died with great courage. Enough? Yes, sir. They've done us the courtesy of sending his body home. Have you any instructions, sir? Talk to General Stryker. Arrange a military funeral with all honors. Of course, sir. That's all. Yes, sir. Ask a Helsinger dead. I'd known, of course, but like a stupid child, I'd hoped and believed some miracle would save him. Somehow I found the strength to leave. It was dusk, the blue hour. Up and down the broad avenues, lights were coming on. I hailed a cab to go to the post office, and sitting alone in the back of the carriage, I suddenly knew I had to leave Vienna, say goodbye for good. Never had I felt so old. My driver stopped at the side entrance to the central post office. I told him to wait. Before I went in, I turned the collar of my top coat up and pulled my hat brim down. It was closing time and the great building was almost deserted. I crossed to the main desk. Yes, sir? Opera box, number 13. Well, the, uh, the letter's addressed to opera box, number 13. Uh, yes, of course, sir. I look. One moment. I'm in a hurry. Yes, sir. I'm looking. I don't seem to find... You're sure there are letters, sir? I mean, addressed like you said? Oh, certainly. They've been here weeks. I've been too busy to call for them. Uh, yes, sir, but I don't You're see... looking on the wrong side. The box to your right there. Oh, yes, sir. I, I was confused. I, I'm sorry. 
here you are, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, just a minute. Yes? Uh, d- did you notice, uh, does it look like rain tonight? I mean, uh, did you notice the weather? The weather. There's not a cloud or breath of wind. Good night. Kaiserhof Cafe, hurry. I looked back. A man was running across the street toward the post office. I wondered then, had I almost stepped into that abyss which for two long years had yawned at my feet? I opened the letters with my penknife. In one envelope, 6,000 kronen. In the other, 8,000. No note, no writing of any kind. I put the money in my wallet, folded the envelopes and put them in my pocket. 14,000 kronen in my pocket. 300,000 in a bank of Rome. I was rich. Very rich. And having made my decision to leave, I was free. At the Kaiserhof Cafe, I changed to another cab, a routine precaution, and went to my hotel. There, I put on my dress uniform for the last time. I looked in the mirror and saluted myself. Said goodbye to being Colonel Alfred Riedel, commander of the Eighth Corps, creator of the Emperor Franz Joseph's Black Cabinet. Colonel Alfred Riedel, a name whispered with terror in every capital of the world. I decided to dine at Holbaum's and asked for a table where I could watch the dancing. Good evening, Colonel Radel. Good evening. I'm sorry, sir. I see you don't remember me. But I do very well, huh? Istanbul, 1909. I sent you there in July and you remained through November. In your reports, you complained of the heat, but you nevertheless did a good job. Your number was Q41. You're an Austrian citizen. Your mother was Greek. And you speak both Greek and Turkish. Oh, that's enough, sir. I've won my wager. Wager? I told my friend, uh, he's sitting over at that table, that I met you only once, five years ago. It was certain you'd remember me. I was right. Your memory's infallible. And what a blessing in your work, Herr Colonel. A mixed blessing, my friend. Hmm? Oh, (laughs) I see what you mean, sir. I suppose there are uh, some things in every man's life he'd uh, just as soon forget. eh? Exactly. But he was thinking of the innocent follies of a man's youth, while I was thinking, remembering again with icy clarity that day two years ago when my secret life began. How I wished I could forget that day. For until then, I enjoyed my life, my friends, and most of all my work. For I had created a secret service, which I could have matched with Scotland Yard or the Dersiem Bureau. But that day, I remember it was cool and bright. And I drove early as usual to the Abgunden Gesellschaft, that vast beehive of activity which I directed. I hurried through the many self-locking doors, the labyrinth I had created, the web I had built. Until at last, I reached the center of the web where I, the spider, lived. There were several people in my outer office, among them Oscar Helsinger, my dearest friend, the person I trusted above any man in the world. When I came in, he embraced me. Congratulations, Alfred. <laughs> For what? I was telling Lieutenant Haushofer, today's an important anniversary. Six years to the day since you and I were assigned to counter-espionage. It is. And I suppose we can congratulate ourselves. Lieutenant Haushofer, do I have any appointments? Now, there's someone waiting inside. And this man, he's one of the agents you assigned to follow Madame Baudard. Oh, yes. Well, has she been arrested? Well, uh, uh, no, sir, not yet. She's still under surveillance? Well... Not exactly, Herr Colonel. Then tell me exactly. She's... We don't know where she is. She gave us the slip. Impossible. Well, first she went into the flower market, through the east door. We stayed right behind her, Fritz and me. Idiots! One of you should have covered the front door. Yes, sir, I know. Inside the market, we lost her in the crowd. And then by luck, I spotted her later near the bridge. Fritz wasn't with me. You lost her twice. Well, she's clever, Madame Baudin. She was walking fast, and she dropped something. I leaned down to pick it up, and when I looked up, she was gone. It was just her handkerchief she dropped. I don't care if it was the blueprints of the fortifications on the Marne. On page 31 of my manual, I say that one should never change objectives. Your objective was Madame Baudin, not the contents of her purse. Yes, sir. You and the other agent are relieved of further duties. Dismissed. Yes, sir. 
You said someone else waiting for me, Lieutenant Hassel? Yes, sir, in your office. It's Major Rakovsky, sir, the new charge d'affaires at the Russian embassy. Probably a courtesy call. Huh? Ask her, wait for me. Oh, uh, no hurry, Alfred. Good morning, Major Rakowski. Good morning, Colonel Radel. Sit down, Major. Thank you. A uh, cigar, Major? No. Excuse me, then. Now, then, I'm very busy, Rakowski. Can we come to the point or save it for another day? To the point. I quite agree. I don't enjoy a chess game when I have my opponent's queen... I have yours, Radel. You're checkmated. You are sure you don't want a cigar? I neither smoke cigars nor opium. Indeed. Yes. Some men smoke both. To the point, Major? That, Herr Radel, is the point. The period. And the sentence preceding this period? You will henceforth deliver to me, as the representative of the Tsar of the Russias, all secret military plans of the Imperial Austro-Hungarian armies. Is that all? For the present? If I for one moment took you seriously, you wouldn't leave this building alive. And what's one life, more or less? But the secret. The secret of one Alfred Radel. That he is a dope addict. That secret, plus facts, names, places, dates, is in the files of my embassy... Unless you agree, those facts will be brought first to the attention of General Streicher, then to Franz Josef himself. Now, let me assure you, this is no pipe dream, Herr Radel. This is real. And these 20,000 gold kronen are also real. We'll arrange future payments through the post office. <laughs> you wonder why we pay when we don't have to, huh? Well, because the money will be some consolation for you, and we are not unfriendly. Oh, come here, Radel. You needn't fear you'll be discovered. Who'd suspect a man in your position? Well, I know this has been sudden, but you realize you have no choice. No choice. One week from today, then, at the Esther Café on Birkenstrasse. You'll be there at two. Good day, Herr Radel. Oh. Oh, Alfred. Are you finished? Uh huh. Oh, yes, finished. Why, you look pale, Alfred. I didn't notice before. I'm tired. Why, you work too hard. Oh, 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 I have a gift for you. Special memento for today. Uh, for the anniversary, I mentioned. Here, it's a pen knife. Huh? A knife? <laughs> You're thinking of the old saying about a knife between friends. But it doesn't mean friends like you and me. You know, I, I wanted to have that silk sheath embroidered with your name and insignia, but well, there wasn't time. I can still have it done. No need, no, I'll have it done. It's a beautiful piece of work, a knife. <laughs> I thought so. Ask, uh, tell me, what creature devours spiders? Why, I, I don't know. I'll tell you, Oscar. Another spider. Spiders devour everything. Even their own. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Herbert Marshall in Betrayal in Vienna. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, Harlow, who's the league standout? Why, that famous Autolite electrical system, Stan. Every part matches perfectly to give your car the smoothest performance money can buy. And all the players on the Autolite team are related. You bet they are, Stan. The Autolite coil distributor and all the other important units and their thousands of component parts are related by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill and are used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars. That Autolite electrical system is as vital as a tie-breaking homer, Harlow. And, friends, because that electrical system is so important to the smooth and efficient operation of your car, why not treat it to a periodic checkup? See your car dealer or visit your nearest authorized Autolite service station. You can find the name of your nearest Autolite service station in the classified section of your telephone directory. 
Or call Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. She'll quickly tell you the address of the authorized auto light service station nearest you. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Herbert Marshall in Elliot Lewis's production of Betrayal in Vienna, a dramatic report well calculated to keep you in suspense. I, the spider, devouring even my own, betraying my own, my country, my friends. But it's not really hard to betray your friends, not at first. The world doesn't change for you overnight. The sun shines in the morning and warms you. And a woman is still beautiful. Everything goes on as it did for a while. For myself, I constructed excuses. That plan for the three-pronged invasion of Serbia, which I handed over, can be changed. Then the Russians' information will be useless. As soon as I conquer the opium habit, and I am conquering it, I'll be free. Yes, I explained to myself, comforted myself. But still at night, I often felt a chill go through me. For in the dark corners of my mind, I knew I was a traitor to my people, my friends, my country. Radu, we have decided on the following plan. You'll arrest one of our spies, a certain Austrian named Zane. You'll put him on trial. You may sentence him to death. Am I permitted to ask why? Zane is expendable, shall we say? But that's not our major purpose. You're a master at intrigue. Suppose you give me your guess. I will catch a Russian spy. I will force him into confession, since I will know everything about him using your files. The public will be amazed, shocked, pleased. I will be an even greater hero, and therefore more valuable to you. (laughs) Radel, I fully believe you are worth the 100,000 kronen a year we pay you. That's a small price for the destruction of an empire. (laughs) If I may be so bold, Herr Radel, that's the first stupid statement I've ever heard you make. You're not destroying this empire. Corruption and decadence are doing that. A thousand and one corruptions, not yours alone. Are we more corrupt than you? We are not corrupt, in my opinion. Then you are a fool. Perhaps. But I'm a fool who's calling the tune, whereas you're a wise man who's dancing to it. Am I right, Herr Radel? He was right. I danced to his tune. I had to. I ordered the arrest of the Austrian citizen Adolf Zane. He went on trial, charged with treason, with betrayal of his country to the Russians. The trial was an enormous success. I stunned the court and astonished the world with my knowledge of Zane. I knew every step he'd taken for the past five years, every penny he'd collected, every secret he'd sold. But how could you know this? How could you possibly know it? Unless... Confine yourself to answering questions, I'd say. Proceed, Colonel Radel. On the 19th of March at 11 p.m., you turned over to a Russian representative all the correspondence, the most secret correspondence between our beloved emperor and the Kaiser of the Germans. Isn't that true? Yes. Yes, it's true. But how could you know? Do you know the penalty for your crime? Yes. Tell me. Death. By hanging. And what else? What else? I don't know. The convicted traitor will be buried in civilian clothes in an unmarked grave. Colonel, for the love... I wasn't the only one. What about Arnold Sonderheim? He's just as guilty as I am. You will answer questions. And Hoffman Kish. He's been a spy for two years, right in the bureau. Silence! Colonel Radel, if this man has accomplices, surely the court wishes to hear. Of course, Your Honor, but... While it cannot save this miserable man's life to tell us their names... It will in some way redeem him in the eyes of his countrymen. Proceed, Adolf Say. It wasn't that I was afraid he would betray me. He didn't know. Nobody knew except Major Rakowski himself. 
But I had been ordered to arrest one spy, try one spy, have one spy executed. And now he was implicating others. When the trial ended, I was congratulated by the crown prince himself. I was the most celebrated man in the empire. But at three that morning, I was summoned to a meeting. You fool! We gave you Zane, not Sunderheim and Kish. I could not control him. You had the brains you pretend you... No, never mind. The damage is done. Now, we want the name of your top agent in Petersburg. No. I hope that was an involuntary no. I no longer use opium, Major. I'm no longer your man. Ah? And how about the letters addressed to Opera Box 13, Herr Radel? The letters fat with Cronin you've called for so regularly. You're no longer a dope addict. But you're a traitor. Then we can prove it. Now, come, the name of your top agent. But why? For what? Your prestige has been built up at great expense to us. Now, we must repair our own prestige. I won't do it. Plans are one thing. People are another. Now, don't be naive. When your Austrian armies march, they'll be sliced to ribbons because of you. Thousands of men will die. Men I don't know. Don't trifle with us, Radel. The name. In Helsingfors, there's a man. Yalma Kekonen. Uh, nobody. I want your key man. In Kiev. Your yeah. key man, Radel? Who is in Petersburg? In Petersburg? No one in Petersburg. There is. That much we know. His name. His name! And there is an importer on the Nevsky Prospect. His name is Mirachinsky. He is our top agent. Ah! His real name is Oscar Helsinger. He is my friend. When Oscar was arrested, he smuggled a message out to me. Alfred, someone close to you betrayed me. Find out who. I thought then of suicide, but I waited, hoping for some miracle. Then today, word came that he was dead. And I knew there was nothing left for me in Vienna. But in Italy, in the sun, I didn't finish my dinner. I decided to pack and leave Vienna immediately and catch the train for Rome that leaves shortly after midnight. At my hotel, I started across the great, bright, nearly deserted lobby. Colonel Radel. Yes? Uh, we uh, found this silk thing. It looks like a knife sheath. Is it yours? Where did you find it? I must have dropped it when I left my room. I value it a great deal. You, you see, it was a gift from a friend. <laughs> From a dead friend, betrayed by me, his dead hand reaching out to trap me. For at that moment, I knew I was lost. Knew with dreadful certainty where I had dropped the sheath. In the cab, the fiat I took from the post office. It had been found there by... Slowly, I looked around the lobby and saw them. Drably dressed men, too obviously not looking in my direction. The postal clerk had signaled them when I called for the letters. They'd arrived too late, but somehow, by some stroke of, of impossible luck, they'd found the cab I took, and they traced me to my hotel. There's your elevator, sir. I'm not going up. Yes, sir. I have a headache. I think I'll take a walk. When I went out through the big revolving door, I knew without looking that the two men were behind me. My boots rang on the paving, but when I stopped, their footsteps sounded a moment behind me. I crossed the park. They followed. I knew they wouldn't kill me in the street. The government wouldn't risk the scandal. But with pain and pride, I knew, too, they would surely kill me somewhere. For men from the organization I had created would follow their quarry to the ends of the earth. I ducked in through a great coffee house and cut out another door. One was waiting there. The other followed me through. I tried to trick them then by tearing the envelopes to bits. The envelopes marked Opera Box number 13, strewing the paper in their path. But they were well trained by me. They never faltered. They left the evidence blowing down the dark street in order not to lose their man. Then I knew it was hopeless. I went back to my hotel and sat down in my room to wait. The 
door is unlocked. Gentlemen, I've been expecting you. Good evening, Prince Otto. Good evening, General. Good evening, Lieutenant Hauswerfer. Colonel Raider, we would like a complete account of all your activities. I will write an account, if you'll permit me the time. Of course. Colonel, how could you have done it? It wasn't difficult. Treason takes over a man's heart as the camel invaded the poor Arab's tent. A little at a time. First, a man betrays himself. But how, sir? A man like you. I indulged myself. I was an opium addict. Committed to opium, I was forced to commit myself further. Have you a gun, Colonel? That's the best way, of course. Have you a gun? No, sir. Lieutenant? I have a Luger. General Stryker, I believe, carries a Mauser. I prefer the Luger. Here you are, then, sir. Come, gentlemen. We will wait downstairs. Now it is all written down. Outside, the cathedral is striking midnight. Midnight, September 15, 1913. I look out over the sleeping city, east to where the sky will pale before the rising sun. There in the east, the Russians are ready. To the west, facing our German ally, the French too are ready. I have made them so. In six months, in a year, two years at the most, those armies will march. Whatever the outcome, I would have made my contribution, but I won't be here to see it. I'll lie in an unmarked grave. I've said goodbye to Vienna, to all I loved. Now it is time to say goodbye to Alfred Redl. When I snap off the safety on this gun, when I pull the trigger, it'll be the end of an empire, of an era. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Friends, this is World Series Wilcox again to remind you that Autolite is the world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. In 28 plants from coast to coast, Autolite makes over 400 products for cars, trucks, tractors, planes, and boats. These include complete electrical systems, Autolite batteries, such as the famous Autolite Stay Full, and a complete line of ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, both standard and resistor types. Autolite also makes automotive wire and cable, bumpers and hubcaps, electric windshield wiper motors, and many more. And all are backed by constant Autolite research and precision built to highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week on Suspense, our star will be Mr. Cornell Wilde in another story based on actual events, the terrifying study of a pyromaniac, a dramatic report we call The Flame. In weeks to come, we shall also present Mr. Ray Milland and Mr. Richard Widmark, all on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Betrayal in Vienna was adapted for Suspense by Sylvia Richards from research gathered by Dana Lee Thomas. Featured in tonight's cast were Ben Wright, Joseph Kearns, William Johnstone, Herb Butterfield.